according to the best efforts that I've got to my ability to make those uh, calculations as for where it is. But before I do, I thought it'd be a good idea uh, just to go over some of the uh, recent information uh, for those new subscribers to the channel and just a recap for those that have been following the um, you know the progression with the topic uh, that this channel is mainly concerned with the magnetic pole shift so um, as you can see uh, I'm pretty much central in the United Kingdom at around about 52 degrees uh, longitude so um, you know I'm probably about four and a half thousand miles away from the magnetic North Pole um, and as you can see if I just zoom in onto these these uh, markers these little yellow markers that you can see are um, GPS coordinates that was supplied by um, NOAA and uh, as you can see there's quite a few of them and um, you know it took a bit of time to put all those GPS coordinates over the years that NOAA had been measuring where the magnetic pole was and how it had been migrating. So if we just go from uh, the 1900s because that's really where the magnetic north pole started to migrate in a single vector towards um, Siberia we can see how far it's been moving during that period of time. So let me just uh, turn it round so that we can fit in the 1900s uh, measuring uh, point it's there and if we get up the measuring tool so that we can see the heading and also um, how many miles it's been covering uh, that since that period in 30 year intervals up until the recent date we can get an idea of where it is now and how fast it's been travelling over set periods of time so if we start with the 1900s and just measure that off to the 1930s a 30 year period we can see that it has travelled roughly 97, 98 miles so if we measure from the 1930s to see if, you know over a period of time it has increased to the 1960s which is here, we'll see that it's almost doubled its speed therefore covered twice the amount of distance since um, it began moving since the 1900s to the 1930s. From the 1930s to the 1960s it's doubled the distance it's actually covered in that same period of time of 30 years. So if we take another reading then from the 1960s to the 1990s there we are. We can see that it's done 232 uh, miles in that same 30 year period. So a slight increase over distance and time. And from the 1900s to, sorry, the 1990 to uh, 1912 sorry 2012 uh, we see something quite alarming that's took place it has done actually 591 miles or thereabouts in that period of time so how far then do you think it might have moved since 2012 to 2015 well according to my best um, you know measuring efforts uh, it has covered 463 miles in just three years <laughs> now I've always measured it from the same place in central England right so if you're measuring it from further towards the equator those uh, yearly periods uh, become different um, with regards to one degrees measurements over over a period of time but just to recap from the 1900s to 1930s it moved 98 miles from 1930s to 1960s it moved 199 miles from the 1960s to the 1990s it moved 207 miles so just a little bit more than the previous 30 years but things changed again in since 1990 to 2012 a large acceleration 
so it covered more distance over a shorter period of time. So from 1990 to 2012, 611 miles or thereabouts, and from 2012 to 2015, another 455 miles. So it's really uh, getting a move on, uh, you know, uh, as as time. Um, gets shorter it's covering more distance so the GPS coordinates uh, for where I calculate the magnetic north pole to be are 84.54 degrees north by 135 degrees point 12 degrees east so that's roughly if you're looking on Google Earth you, that if you want to put a pin mark in there that's where it'll be around about this time now if I just back out uh, by the way, the 40 degrees mark. This is a total of 30. Uh, right. So, so since the 1900s to the present day, it's done 1,570 miles, and that's roughly about 34 degrees. Now, I've always said 40 degrees is where we start to reach that point in time where things start to progress much, much quicker, because it is leaving the strong field lines and it's entering the weak field lines and as we've seen from previous experiments that I've conducted when it gets to the 40 degrees mark things start to uh, flip over so I'm, I'm predicting that around about the 40 degrees mark is where we're going to start to see uh, a pole shift occur and occur more faster um, so if I just back out <coughs> we get a rough idea as to where the magnetic north pole is and um, I want you to just pay attention to this continent here uh, and in relationship to where that red line where the current position is with regards to England so it's going straight up to the east side of this continent in between Greenland or Iceland uh, what is the name of that continent self barred is it? Probably making a mess of that, but there you go. Um, so we're going to look on the swarm data to see uh, where this line is, and in particular where the magnetic north pole is with relation to ship to the swarm data, uh, because something interesting um, in uh, the position of where I've calculated the magnetic north pole to be, um, there's a significant um, with regards to the swarm data, so let's get that up so we can have a look at that. Uh, let's just uh, get this off. So we're just looking at the northern hemisphere of the swarm data. Now I said the magnetic uh, north pole, if you've got a compass, the compass is actually pointed in between the fragmenting um, poles. Now they're both polarized north and as you can see that's that con continent I mentioned there and you can see that that is virtually in between the two poles and it's slightly towards the right hand north pole uh, on this on this chart but you can see uh, the line that was on Google Earth where I measured it was running all, you know virtually in between the two uh, main uh, plumes of magnetic uh, str field strength if you want uh, so um that's it that you know it almost confirms then um you know where the pole is with relationship to those um uh, jet jet streams as well if we look up on the temperature map which I'll just pull up now so here we are on the temperature chart and uh, if we was looking at the magnetic uh, swarm data we would see the two magnetic blooms both over the north uh left hemisphere and the right hemisphere on the map and we would see in between as we are seeing like a, a peaked region of warmer weather so you know I've, as I've said before I'm not going to keep repeating it but you know where these plumes are are going to be the regions where it's co much colder and that is because um, you know uh, magnetic uh, material favours cooler uh, regions of the earth therefore increasing the magnetic ability of the uh, material 
um, in strength and where it's warmer it's going to be weaker and what we can see in between the uh, two magnetic plumes on swarm data is uh, a weaker magnetic region in the center which runs parallel or vertical from um, England up past that continent that we pointed out on that um, other chart and that rounds up the update uh, for the magnetic pole um, and its p relative position um, over the next month or so um, just when we can get a few quid together I'm going to be building um, three s separate stations with uh, three three axes uh, magnetometers in and the reason for that is if there's a random uncertainty with one of them it's unlikely that it's going to be in all three at the same time so we can chart uh, with the best accuracy of the um, you know the components uh, where the magnetic north pole is and if we have such things such as solar flares we can see how they affect the magnetic pole or the magnetosphere and if there is any changes in the core of the earth with the magneto uh, we should be able to pick up those uh, variations uh, what I'm doing at the moment is trying to source the most accurate and affordable magneto uh, magnetometer um, and then you know build up a framework to attach it to you know a secure location on the outside of the property so that we can you know uh, monitor it over a 24 hour period over a weekly period and a monthly period and we can run it on some graphs and we can see where all three of them deviate uh, and uh, we can try and work out what was regard, you know, what it was that caused those deviations on the actual location of the magnetic pole, uh, whether it was solar flares, changes to the interior core. We can try our best just to work it out, but more importantly, it's just to keep a track on where it is, how fast it's migrating now across towards, uh, you know, Siberia. And um, if you want to, uh, you know, help contribute towards some of the costs of those electronics then you know the links always down there guys um, you know I've got the time uh, I've got limited uh, money uh, but you know I couldn't be any more keener on the topic than what I am you know so uh, maybe if you want to do your little bit uh, there's a link down there uh, chip in we'll get this equipment built and we can start uh, monitoring it it's that simple Okay guys, uh, as always, you know, you keep safe, um, try not to worry about it too much, uh, you know, I'm sure the sun's going to come up tomorrow and it will set on the evening. And as always guys, I'm going to say what I usually do. Bye for now.